All right, let's talk about this right now and right from the very first moment that we learned about the Nord Stream pipeline attack. We knew who was responsible, right? Anyone with a brain understands this. This was the largest eco-terrorist attack in history. To anyone paying attention, it became immediately clear that it was the United States uh, directing traffic on this. Now, did they actually pull the trigger on this? Was it, you know, United States Marines or Navy SEALs dropping down on a rope and doing it? Who knows? But they certainly were driving the traffic on all of this. And were they able to push this off on somebody else? Could they could, what is it called? Plausible deniability? Where they could say, we just, uh, you know, we, we gave the okay, but we didn't see it happen. So yeah, there's some people out there. We have some people out there that can, you know, take care of this. We have plausible deniability. Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, you saw President Biden and others just basically uh, sloughing this off not answering the question. The Western media, though, has been burying the story. I mean, go to CNN, go to BBC, go to these other Western media outlets, and they just like ignored the story. Think about this as like a 9-11 style terror attack, yeah. ecological terror attack, and it's been largely just pushed away and ignored. Or the uh, BP oil spill, right? Yeah. It is on par with that ecologically. And we had so a camera set up on the BP oil spill, and every day you saw that camera, remember the bubbling in the Gulf oil? Like It was like nonstop. Oh, I remember, right. And coverage of the Deepwater Horizon oil spill and BP, like every day, right? Although there's the joke, I think it's from Morrissey, the singer, that... Um, you know, if like the rest of the world just kind of fell away tomorrow, it wouldn't even make the six o'clock news in America because <laughs> right. it's like, ah, that's happening there. Who cares? Europeans will be cold. We're okay. Yeah, they're okay over there in Kansas. That's fine. Well, the best, like I said, the Western media has been ignoring this story. It's not a front page story on any of the Western media media websites, but the truth will come out. And eventually we will hear from the Biden administration on who ordered this attack. Somebody, we will find this out eventually. Maybe not this year, maybe next year. But Jeffrey Sachs, um, is uh, he's an economics professor at Columbia. Very smart guy. You might remember us featuring Jeffrey here on the show a number of months ago. Of course, he was calling out the creation of COVID, saying where it came from, um, right from a lab in Wuhan, talking specifically about the bio labs. Um, he has been really a contrarian voice and Bloomberg knows this like they've had him on from time to time and he said some contrarian things that doesn't get big play in the mainstream media and yesterday though was really a stunning moment on Bloomberg's uh, morning show called surveillance with uh, with like Lisa Abramowitz and Tom Keen um, anyway Tom Keen is the guy in the bow tie he's the older gentleman and Jeffrey Sachs was on talking about what's going on in Ukraine and what's about and what's happened with the Nord Stream pipeline. I want you to watch this like unbelievable exchange. Watch. They raise rates in the front end. Well, Europe is in a very, very sharp economic downturn. Uh, the sharp decline of output and living standards also shows up as a rise of prices. But the, the main fact is that the European economy is getting hammered by this, by the sudden cutoff of energy. And now uh, to make it uh, definitive, the destruction of uh, the Nord Stream pipeline, which I, I would bet was a U.S. action, perhaps U.S. and, and Poland. Uh, this is uh, right, Jeff, speculation. Jeff, we got to stop there. That's a, that's a quite a statement as well. Why do you feel Absolutely. that that was a U.S. action? What evidence do you have of that? Well, first of all, there's direct radar evidence that U.S. Uh, helicopters, military helicopters that are normally based in Gdansk uh, were uh, circling over this area. We also had the threats from the United States earlier in this year that one way or another, we are going to end Nord Stream. We also have a remarkable statement by Secretary Blinken last Friday in a press conference. That he says this is also a tremendous opportunity. It's oh. a strange way to, it's, uh, sorry, it's a strange way to talk if you're worried about just listen to them try to cut him off like oh my god he, beep 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 he's going afoul of the mainstream narrative like tom tried to cut him off and now lisa bromowitz is trying to cut him off like his oh my face god. was hilarious when the news anchor responds in a negative way he went yeah i said that Oh, I said that? I'm going to get in trouble here, get a little spanking? <laughs> sorry but i was always going to say that so listen to lisa now try to cut him off watch to piracy on international Professor. infrastructure of vital significance. So I know this runs counter to our narrative. It runs, you're not allowed to say these things uh, in, in, uh, in the West. But the fact of the matter is, 
all over the world, when I talk to people, they think the okay. U.S. did it. And just to tell you, well, and, and by, by the way, even reporters on our papers that are involved tell me privately, yeah, well, of course, but well, it doesn't show up in our, our media. Professor, I, I want to get into it for Tad about what did or did yeah, not yeah. happen with Nord Stream because I don't have the... Yeah, because you know what? We just we don't want to we don't want to cover that story. I don't want to get in tit for tat, and I also don't want evidence. Right. We can't have that. So let's just speed this segment up and, and cut you off. And by the way, now if you go to Bloomberg's website to try to find this this segment, you can't find it. So this is Bloomberg's website. Do a search for Jeffrey Sachs. The latest result is from February of 2022, the day after uh, the or right around the day that I think the, the war broke out. So you can't find this segment. They've censored this segment. Bloomberg. I mean, think of all the things that the media is perfectly willing to speculate upon. But this, come on. Yeah, we can't do this. No. And we're going to hide this result. Well, I, so I, I, I absolutely love that they're like, so what are your thoughts on the Nord Stream pipeline? And he's like, well, this is my thought. So I don't want to get into the tit for tat. Like, <laughs> well, then why did you ask? <laughs> right. like, you, you brought it here? up. <laughs> I mean, we had this big discussion about 9-11, like who was responsible, you know, like who should who should then we make pay for what they did to us, right? Yeah. Um, this is one of the major pipelines that's delivering uh, natural gas to Europe. People will freeze, you know. Um, and again, this is, you, you see students in the Czech Republic yesterday morning, uh, you know, this video is unbelievable. The students in Czech Republic wearing blankets because they haven't, they're not turning on the heat. So all of these students are just huddled in blankets in classrooms. Oh, like that's what's happening, guys. So again, he talked about President Biden specifically making this threat back in the early part of the year. Listen to President Biden say it. Let me answer the first question first. If Germany, if uh, if Russia invades, uh, that means tanks or troops crossing the, uh, the, the border of Ukraine uh, again, then uh, there will be uh, we there will be no longer a Nord Stream 2. We, we will bring an end to it. Yeah, we will bring an end to it, right? He goes on and on about that. Um, the same thing has happened with Victoria Nuland, we featured here on the show. Regi regime change champion Victoria Nuland, who installed the puppet regime uh, inside Ukraine and who told Europe to go F itself, uh, is the same person who said we would take it out. Remember this? Um, with regard to Nord Stream 2, uh, we continue to have uh, very strong and clear conversations uh, with our German allies, and I want to be clear with you today. If Russia invades Ukraine, one way or another, Nord Stream 2 will not move forward. I love her smile too, you know, like she's you know, like, it will not move forward. She reminds me of like Dolores Umbridge from Harry Potter. <laughs> um, then you have a Antony Blinken, of course, who Jeffrey Sachs was referring to, and Secretary of State Antony Blinken deflecting the question, dodging the question about who attacked the Nord Stream pipeline, and instead of turning it right around to the sort of Klaus Schwab World Economic Forum Great Reset play, which is, this is a great opportunity for the world. We should not miss this opportunity. Listen. Ultimately, um, this is also a tremendous opportunity. It's a tremendous opportunity to once and for all remove the dependence on Russian energy, and thus to take away from uh, Vladimir Putin the weaponization of energy as a means of advancing uh, his uh, imperial designs. Yeah, so it's an amazing opportunity. And then we actually this morning, I'm uh, sorry, yet last night we had uh, uh, U.S. Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm like piling on and agreeing with Anthony Blinken about this is an amazing opportunity. So this is the White House line now. You've heard it from you heard it from. Corinne Jean-Pierre, who's the White House press spokesperson. You've heard it now from Anthony Blinken. You're hearing it from Jennifer Granholm. They're all speaking from the same script, which is this is an amazing energy opportunity for us to move towards this great reset agenda, which is to get you off of fossil fuels. We should use this. We should use it. We created the problem. We should use it. Listen to Jennifer Granholm. I think Russia has proven itself to be an unreliable energy partner. It used to be reliable. No more. No country wants to take the risk of putting a significant amount uh, of its energy demand to Russia's supply. It is clear. And in fact, I think this accelerates the EU's push to become energy independent through clean energy. And they're building up their own homegrown energy. I'm here. I'm at the um, IAEA conference, the International Atomic Energy Agency conference. Every country is looking at the risks associated with putting too many eggs in one basket or putting too many eggs in the basket of petrodictators, 
and the volatility of the fossil fuels that uh, accrue from that. Everyone is looking to how I can become energy independent. Yeah. Okay. So all of this was a great opportunity. Don't miss the, don't let this opportunity pass you by. It's to like freeze. a television commercial, right? Are you still hoping you'll get gas from the Nord Stream pipeline this winter? Well, don't let this opportunity pass you by. Put up some solar panels on your house. Buy an electric car. We know you'll freeze, but that's okay. Like, don't let this opportunity pass you by you right now. You can freeze for your, as your patriotic duty. Right. So. Well, this, this seems a lot like trying to get out in front of the story. Like, you know, when people, when a scandal's about to break and then somebody like admits to it before the press releases it so that you're out in front of it and it looks like, yeah, yeah, no, it was, it was fine. It's like they're, they're hitting this PR before it's, it's official who did it. Right, yeah. right, right, so right. Then the, yeah. Yeah, who, we, we, we told you, like, this is an opportunity, so we don't know exactly who did it. We'll pretend that we still don't know exactly. Um, I mean, you can talk about how, like, look, we should have been prepared with alternative energy, which, sure, yeah, every, that, that may be a valid point. I don't think the green energy that the powers that be is promoting are the answers. But, yeah, everybody would like to be less dependent on something that they do not produce. Um, but it's really scary to have your children freezing uh, we've been through this before because we lived in an area in New Jersey where our power would constantly shut off for big storms like Irene and Hurricane Sandy. Irene, Hurricane Sandy, and we would be without power for weeks on end. And to have my, my babies were really small at the time, like one and three, and to have them freezing in a house and I had no alternative was terrifying. And this is the future that we, you feel so helpless when you have, and remember they got colds, their whole faces were red. We didn't have the third baby at the time. Um, and I remember how scared I felt and that's living I... in a society that I, I had no options to like chop down wood and like make, you know, I mean, we had a fireplace, but when they went to bed, it just was really scary. And I, you know, this is and a that was small a taste. And that was a man, I'm sorry, that was a natural disaster. Yes. Right. So this is man-made. Right. Like, we have a choice. And so these schools in the Czech Republic that are literally shutting down, they haven't even turned on their heat because they can't. So they're just giving out blankets to their students. Like what? I mean, okay, that's what we're doing. And that's yeah. not even the worst of it. We're just starting to get cold. Like that's it not even the worst of it. It feels yet. awful. And I know that we are collectively going to feel this way. And politicians feel like this was an acceptable thing to do. Somebody felt like you know, taking this resource out of people's hands was acceptable. Um, and it turns my stomach to think about it.